Hello and welcome back to my sustainability journey. Today I'm very excited because I am going to share with you my plans and my ideas for my urban food forest, which I have been very excited about. Just a quick disclaimer, the front of the property where the food forest is going to be going is on a main road. So if you hear cars in the background, I'm very sorry, there's one coming now. It's part of urban living, it's part of where I am. So I apologize about that, but there's not much I can do about it at this stage. So jumping into food forests. Within an urban environment, we're quite limited with what we can do in urban forests because they actually require quite a lot of space. Theoretically, in practice, they don't actually need a lot of space at all. And you can completely modify the food forest principles to suit your needs. And what I mean by that is when we go through the seven layers in the food forest now, you'll see what I mean and how you can modify them. But before we get into the seven layers, let me show you what my plans are. So if we look at this section right behind me. This is going to be the first main section of the garden. We're going to have primarily as the two main fruit trees canopy layer here, we're going to have mangoes and then a whole bunch of stuff which I'm going to get into. Then if we look into that corner where the jungle gym is just in front, there will be another section over there and then all the way along from that corner along this wall We'll have another food forest, but more straight, curvy, not a big bulging one like that one over there and the one behind me. So a little bit of background as to the environment. Sorry, it's dogs, toys. <laughs> this you can see is pure sand and it's unfortunately part of Cape Town soil. Cape Town has a lot of sandy soil but we are quite lucky in that when this becomes wet it becomes dark 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 brown so it's actually surprisingly rich um, because nothing is really grown here we have a lot of trees there's a lot of organic waste on the top always have to rake up there's quite a lot going on in the soil which is perfect all that's needed is for something to grow in it, to hold and bind the sand together and then start creating that, that underground environments of roots and bacteria, microorganisms, all of those things to then start creating that underground organic environment. Also then with the sand, thick layers of mulch, talking 15, 20 centimeters thick like this, because the biggest problem with sand is evaporation and water loss it loses water so incredibly quickly so when you're planning your food forest think of all of these things think of your soils think about are there different areas within your garden that have different types of soil different types of water runoff all of those things those are all things you need to be thinking about because it will impact what you can plant and where you can plant so if we look at a traditional food forest there are seven layers and the seven layers represent different zones, heights and then what you can grow in each of those seven layers. So if we look at the first layer which is the canopy layer, it's also the main layer. So you need to give this layer a lot of thought because once you've planted this layer, you can't just unplant it or change it up. These are your big fruit trees. And your, and your nuts. So mulberries, mangoes, avos, olives, your bigger trees that you need to position quite strategically. So if we look at this area we have here, it's about, it's about, I'd say about 10 meters from edge to edge. So what we'll be doing is putting a mango on that side, close to the edge and a mango on this side. So there's enough spread on either way 
and then hopefully it won't cover that vegetable patch um, but then there's enough room for the canopies to grow okay, then you look at the second layer which is the low tree layer now within the low tree layer you have a lot of dwarf trees for me i'm going to be planting dwarf pom pomegranates and we struggle with fruit flies so i'm not convinced about loquats and kumquats yet because they do have a reputation for attracting and, and harboring fruit flies those you can plant i'm not going to do that quite yet so for now it's pomegranates for me but anything that's dwarf variety apples pears all of those things you can use and then thirdly which is one of my most exciting layers is the shrub layer now within the shrub layer you have your berries we have seven different varieties of berries and there's just so much you can do with them and some of the berries we have is raspberry red raspberry black black currant red currant blackberry blueberry sea berry elderberry there are just so many berries but there's so much you can do with them and they all have different uses some you eat fresh some you can jam some have medicinal purposes so very excited about that shrub layer then your fourth layer is your herbaceous layer now within that you can also include your compost activators like comfrey and all of those that have deep roots that bring all the nutrients out things like rosemary lavender yarrow lemongrass and a range of other herb-like plants that will take up this fourth herbaceous layer number five is your rhizosphere now your rhizosphere sounds and it's true like it is for your rhizome plants things like turmeric ginger um, horseradish uh, jerusalem artichokes however this layer is not reserved purely for plants with rhizomes it's also used for plants with roots so carrots turnips parsnips beetroots anything with a big root if you want to do rhizomes i would just caution you to be very careful with what you plant and where you plant it something like horseradish if it goes it can be impossible to get rid of um, I know quite a few people that have successfully grown horseradish and confined it but I also have heard horror stories of people basically losing a garden because the horseradish ran so out of control that they just couldn't get everything out um, and the roots go quite deep as well so if you want to plant rhizomes think very carefully about where you want to put it and and how much space you're going to give them to spread so that you can properly dig down to get all of those rhizomes out at the end of the season to rather plan on how much you want for the next season okay then the sixth layer is also quite an exciting layer it's the soil surface layer now there we're looking at ground covers but this specific layer needs a bit of tweaking and why i say that is this is a layer you don't necessarily want to just be doing fruit and veg here you can think of your local environment your local microclimate um, think of what's going to bring in the pollinators for me i've got a winter mix of flowers which i'm just going to take a handful and throw and sprinkle so any of the pollinators in the area during winter will have flowers have some pollen and it'll bring in some beautiful colors to the ground in summer this is going to become our pumpkin and squash layer in summer we're going to be using the soil surface layer for our pumpkins squash and all of those that are sprawling and spread out but in winter you tend to not have a lot of those available then the seventh layer is a layer i would say take with a pinch of salt use at your own discretion i'm not going to be using it because i just simply don't have the space and that is the vertical layer so we're looking at creepers and climbers granadillas watermelons anything that hooks vines and grows up first of all you actually need quite a mature tree that they can grow up or you need to bring in artificial structures for those things to climb up i don't want to do that quite yet i want the garden to just sink into itself and establish and then we'll see what happens but for now 
This is not a layer I'm going to be doing. Those are the seven layers explained and described and with a bit of context. Now I'm just going to show you through the garden quickly at the first bed that I want to do. Just to show you what my ideas are and give you some idea of how the seven layers that I've explained come into play. And I'm sure just by going through all these layers, your mind has already started thinking, oh, mangoes, pomegranates. Then we can have some berries with some carrots and beetroots in between, with some flowers. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful concept. And when it comes to life, it is a beautiful thing to see. So let's go through it and hopefully this can turn into something beautiful too. Okay, so this is the first area that I was talking about. And what I was saying is mango over, over here and then another mango in this corner. So if I bring you in close here, I just want to show you, we had some leftover sweet potatoes that I sprouted from the harvest. So there's one, that's the purple variety, here's a orange skin variety. And there's some more over there. So the idea is these are going to be spreading. That one will probably sprawl out a bit. So we've got our root layer done. We'll probably definitely going to be adding in some beetroots carrots, turnips, but just kind of spotted, not anything specifically planted. And those I actually want to use for seeding. So the carrots, I want to leave them in the ground, let them go to seed so I can harvest those. We'll then also be taking raspberries and putting them probably in that corner around the first mango. So they'll take up that whole corner because they also spread their roots quite quite rapidly then we'll have a pomegranate which will go on the front here somewhere so that it can bush out and kind of go into the walkway a bit that would be the idea there and then like i said we've got the flowering seeds that we're just going to scatter all over so i'm going to quickly just plant out roughly what i think all our plants are at the back and then let's see what it looks like okay so if i show you some of the things that we're going going to be putting in here there are our two mangoes. At the back here is one of the raspberries. You can see all the new growth popping up all over the pot. So this thing's just gonna go rampant. Here is the pomegranate. It's already got a bit sleepy for the year. Uh, lemongrass. We're gonna be putting in some pawpaws here as well. Then we have chamomile, a couple of marigolds, comfrey over there yarrow over there and then we've got the sweet potatoes in already we're going to be putting in seeds for the carrots and the beetroots and the turnips we're going to be sowing a whole bunch of other seeds as well so this might not look like a lot right now but it's all going to fill out and we're also going to be using the opportunity to take up some of the space for our winter planting so we're going to put in kale some broccoli, some of the, the more ornamental stuff like the Romanesco, purple sprouting broccoli, just to bring in a, a bit of a punch factor into, into the food forest layers. Okay, so very basically, this is not a full garden. There's still a lot more that's gonna go into this, but it gives an idea of, of how it's planted. And here's my thinking. There's the, there's the mango that's gonna take up this space. Then we have raspberries, which will take up pretty much most of the space around there when they spread. Then next to that, we have the pawpaws, which are quite skinny when they grow up and they only last four to five years. They'll take up the middle space while the mango is spread. Other mango there, lemongrass next to that, sweet potatoes in between that mango over there. And then there you can see we have the pomegranate and some of the herbs in front here, some more lemongrass. And then this is all going to be patched up with more chamomile, more of those winter flowers, some root veg, some winter veg that I told you about. This bed is going to get filled up pretty quickly and I'm very excited about it and I can't wait to, to share it with you. So that was quite a little exciting expedition. I was not going to plant it right now, take you through all of that. So planting is pretty straightforward. 
I'm going to plant these directly into the sand with a little bit of, of mulch and feed around the root base. I'm not going to be too hectic about digging in wide circles around it, just because I feel confident that the soil is actually pretty good. Um, and I'm looking forward to showing you the updates here because I think this is going to look awesome. We're going to actually harvest quite a lot out of here. We're going to be coming to this bed quite often, I can tell you that. And then once I do the others, I'll include you in those so that you can see step by step what's happening. You've now seen the planning, all the different layers, my thinking behind it. I'm going to plant it in a couple of months time. We'll come back, do an update and then we can just see how this bed goes over time. I hope you enjoyed this, this quick vlog. Um, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated with projects like this and everything else that I'm busy doing. If you have any questions about what my thinking was, please drop them below. I'm more than happy to get back to you. And then like, share, let's build a community and all try and, and create sustainable environments within our urban environments. Until next time, stay safe everyone.